Sharpen your pencils, folks. We're gonna go back to homeschool. <laughs> Today's subject, math. Welcome back, everybody. Such a pleasure to be back. My name is Alex Beltran, and I talk about real estate tricks, tips, and topics. So, if you want the latest on everything real estate related, hit that subscribe button. Use that little scrolly finger to hit that bell so you never miss out. So whether you're a person that's looking to purchase a property to live in or an investor that's looking to become the next real estate billionaire, making sure that a particular property is worth purchasing or investing in, it requires just a little bit of math. Finding the value in real estate is the fourth most important thing. The first three being location, location, location. But if you look around, no one makes it easy for you to find that information. Or they simply don't wanna divulge that information because one, if they tell you, you won't need them anymore. Or two, they don't even know what to look for themselves. And <laughs> whatever information is out there is usually horrifically wrong. Oh yeah, that's a dig at Zillow's estimates because Zillow knows that their estimates are wrong and that still doesn't stop them from using it. Se te pasa la mano, Zillow, de veras? So in this particular video, I'm gonna break down the easiest ways to value real estate. So if you're a beginner or an intermediate, this video is definitely for you. And if you're advanced, well then consider this a refresher course, a uh, no cost continuation of your real estate education. The first way to value property is not really a mathematical equation. It's a little more of a way of life. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Although kind of not kidding, you do have to dedicate a good portion of your time to comparing one property to another. Comparing properties is a fundamental aspect of valuing real estate property. It's actually where appraisers start their appraisal process. We've all heard real estate agents call it by its fancy name, comps. Side note, for marketing purposes, I personally don't call them comps or comparables. I actually call it competition, but that's a little more of a topic for a different day. We already compare things that we want to purchase. Think of car listings, Amazon listings. Well, real estate, it's no different. So what aspects of a home do you compare? In other words, what does similar mean? And it's something that has sold within the last three to six months. Obviously the sooner, the better. With roughly the same number of square footage, rooms, and condition. And you really don't want to go further than a quarter mile away from the subject property. Hopefully there's a similar home within the same track of homes, but yeah, not everyone can be perfect. And then look at what homes have been listed currently. By comparing what homes have sold for compared to what they were asking, you'll get a pretty good idea of what your home is worth. You also wanna compare the condition or how much it would cost to get that home to be identical to another home. And what I mean by that is house A and B are actually the same layout and the same track of homes, but house A has a pool and house B doesn't. If you own house A, then you add the value of the pool to the price of the house and subtract the value of the pool to house B. According to HGTV, adding a concrete in-house pool adds between five to 8% value to the price of your home. So let's do some math. Let's meet in the middle and say that the pool adds 7% value to your home. So house B without the pool is worth $300,000. House A with the pool could be valued at $321,000. Pretty easy, right? Well, well, not quite. That value could be non-existent if there are mild summers and cold winters because winterizing a pool is a hassle and expensive. Or it could approach the higher end if you live in scorching hot deserts like in Arizona or Nevada. You gotta keep in mind that the three most important factors in real estate is location, location, location. Now when it comes to condition, once again, let's say house A and B are those same identical properties. However, house B is in perfect condition while house A needs a lot of cosmetic work. Well, you ask a contractor how much it would cost to get house A to be the same condition as house B. House B minus the cost of repairs equals the value of house A. Enter the house flipper. They pretty much have these mathematical equations down to a science and know the cost-effective approach of reselling that property. Layer on that knockdown texture. Splash some eggshell gray all over the walls. Add three layers of super gloss paint to the trim. Call in the kitchen guys to set up those white shaker cabinets and prefabricated countertops. Crack open one of those nasty Bud Light seltzers and just wait for the offers to come rolling in. So again, for the average home buyer, comparables are the key factor in determining value. 
Another good idea is to start comparing homes in different parts of the city. This will give you a pretty good idea of the incalculable. How close a property is to stores, which one has better views, better school districts, or even privacy. Remember, regardless of what price you can get for a home, what good is it if you hate the area that you're living in? All of that is pretty subjective, but that is nowhere near as subjective as when I used to work the luxury market, because it wasn't uncommon for a $100,000 painting to be included in the price of the home, or some type of fancy car. You name it, it was probably offered in a luxury home. Now I understand that that's an extreme level, but that niche form of real estate does take those subjective matters into account. Now the real math begins, investment, properties. This particular part of the video is going to be geared towards the investor because you have to calculate if a particular type of real estate is worth investing in or else you're going to go real broke real quick. Whether it's a large apartment complex or a small single family property, this mathematical equation is going to come in clutch. There are two numbers that you initially want to look for. Number one is the NOI or the net operating income. In order to get the NOI, you have to get the amount earned per year, which is how much that entire complex or that single family residential made the entire year. You can either ask the owner these numbers or sometimes it's written on the MLS. If you don't have access to either, then this might not be too precise, but you're gonna have to compare it to a similar property in the area. Deduct the maintenance cost and the taxes, which leaves you with the NOI. Once you know the NOI, then you're gonna wanna know the second most important number, which is the cap rate or the capitalization rate, which is calculated by the NOI divided by the property's current value. Let's say your NOI is $145 thousand dollars a year and the average cap rate in your particular city is seven percent which is relatively a normal cap rate it's usually anywhere between five to eight percent it means that 140,000 is seven percent of the price of what it's worth for you to pay for the property have you figured it out yet if you ended up with two million dollars as the value of the property then congratulations you get to go to the kitchen and get yourself a cookie as a reward $2 million would be the price that's worth investing on this hypothetical property. If it's more than that, then kick rocks. Now, if it's less than that, you should have submitted an offer like yesterday. Have I blown your mind yet? Rhetorical question, of course I blew your mind. I have gone to the deepest depths of real estate YouTube channels and none, at least that I have come across, give you these equations without having you pay for their one time special offer discount code only for today, $700 stupid course. <laughs> now I was gonna end this particular video here, but let's go just a little bit deeper into real estate investment waters. I'm talking so deep that 90% of the people watching this video will probably never have a legitimate reason to use this particular equation. At this point, I'm just, you know, what the kids call today, flexing or you know adding a little bit of clout to my real estate prowess this is called the cost approach i've also heard a couple people call it the replacement approach which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like this is an equation that's typically used by those larger real estate projects large government buildings schools skyscrapers pretty much just imagine any major building in a downtown metropolitan area the reality is you can use this particular equation for any real estate project, but it's predominantly used for these much larger projects. This equation is so foreign to the average person that when a developer or a building owner pays a firm to run these equations, us knuckle draggers mistake it for an attempt to commit fraud, when in fact it's actually a very vital number to know. Really what they're doing is pricing out what it would cost to build the entire building, everything from the raw land to the finished product. So you take the cost of the raw land underneath the building, then calculate how much it would cost to build up from there, from leveling the ground, reinforcing the ground to be able to hold all that weight, the pouring of the concrete, every framing brace and 16 penny nail, window panes, insulation, drywall, electrical, HVAC systems, permits, labor costs, no expense is overlooked. Then you depreciate the age of the building and that's what the building is worth. This type of equation is to estimate the value of the building that most likely won't go on the market. Insurers will use this number to price out the coverage or to assess the value of the company for a multitude of reasons. And it goes on the assumption that a buyer will not pay more 
more for the completed property than what it costs for them to build it themselves. Now, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you hire a mathematician from MIT to make these calculations for you. The market dictates what the property is worth. If your calculations tell you that your property is worth $400,000, but you're not getting any offers higher than $325,000, then at that point in time, your house is only worth $325,000. You can either sell it for that $325,000 or hold on to it until someone pays you that $400,000. If you hold on, this isn't a license for you to go chasing the horizon. You can't wait six months, get that $400,000 offer, and then all of a sudden, you want $500,000 for your house. Now you're just being unreasonable. I'm talking to you for sale by owners. Hi. Which brings me to the question of the day. What were some of the deciding factors when buying your residential home? Or if you're an investor, what are the deciding factors when you were buying your investment property? Go ahead and comment in the comments section down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And that is it for this particular video, folks. If you found this video informative or entertaining, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to keep up to date with everything that I'm doing in real estate, go ahead and give me a follow on Instagram. If you want to watch some more of my real estate related content, I'm going to go ahead and link it here and here. Other than that, catch you guys on the next one. Peace.